Okay, so this homework is about the module two review homework. Uh, these are six questions that I selected specifically for you to look at before the test because I think that they kind of look like questions you'll probably see on the test and they have skills in them that I think will really help you for the test. Um, the assignment is to find the solution show your work on one side of the page and then write a really good explanation of how you would explain to somebody how to solve this problem if they didn't know what they were doing at all. Um, I'm not going to fill out that entirely entire paper for you. Uh, instead, I'll work some of the problems just directly from the book and then um, you can write your explanations. So I'm using an old version of the book. The first question says to go to page 25 and look for exercise 4 parts B and C. I'm going to go to page 23 because I'm in, old, in an older book. And so that's this exercise here. And part B says, if the temperature outside was 73 degrees at 5 p.m., but it fell 19 degrees by 10 p.m., what is the temperature at 10 p.m.? Write an equation and solve. So I know that the temperature started at 73 degrees. And if something falls 19 degrees, then I think that fall should be a subtraction or possibly adding a negative. There has to be something that makes this num my answer lower than 73. Uh, I prefer addition, so I'm going to write plus negative 19. And then it wants an equation. So an equation has an equal sign and things on both sides of the equal sign. And so I just have to do 73 plus negative 19. Uh, I could think of that as 73 minus 19. Uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and solve that. Actually, I'm not going to give you an answer to that. And then you can write your explanation on why that's the way you would handle this, uh, this problem. Question C says, write an addition sentence. Anytime these math books say sentence, like addition sentence, number sentence, whatever, they really just mean equation. So I'm going to change that to equation. And then find the sum using the diagram below. So this is vector uh, addition modeling, like we've done a bunch of times in class. So the verse, and they've even labeled it for you, so this isn't too bad. This, is, this vector is obviously negative 10, and the second vector is positive 3.5, so I'm going to add 3.5. And, and then there's lots of different ways you could figure out what this sum is. You could just kind of eyeball by looking where the last vector ends. Um, you could change both of these numbers so that they're improper fractions with the denominator of two, then it's really easy to add them at that point. I think the way that a lot of students would do it is add the whole numbers first. So negative 10 plus 3 is uh, negative 7. But then you still have this positive 1 half to deal with. And we've talked about this in class a couple times where if you have a whole number and a fraction and you want to combine them, you can't combine them to a mixed number very easily if one is negative and the other one's positive, which that's the situation we have here right now. So instead we have to think about if we were at negative seven on the number line and then moved one half in the positive direction, where would we be at? And I'm going to let you answer that and then write an explanation. Okay, so let's flip to the next one, which is page 39 for the newer books, but I think in this book it's going to be page 35. And it says to go to example two, parts A and B. So that's this and this. And so it says distance is positive. Change in elevation or temperature can be positive or negative depending on whether it's increasing or decreasing. Um, so yeah, we've talked about this in class. Distance is always positive but change can be directional, positive or negative. So a hiker starts hiking at the beginning of a trail at a point which is 200 feet below sea level. That below sea level automatically makes me think of negative 200. He hikes, so I'm gonna underline that, and I'm just gonna make a note here for myself that that makes me think of negative 200. He hikes to a location on the trail that is 500 feet, 580 feet above sea level. So that makes me think of positive 580. I won't write that though. And then he stops for lunch. What is the vertical distance between 200 feet below sea level and 580 feet above sea level? 
Well, this is a distance formula problem. The distance between two points, that's the absolute value of one point that we call P and the other point that we call Q. And so it doesn't matter which one we make P or Q. Um, I'll just do um, P equals negative 200 and Q equals 580. You could do it the other way if you wanted to, though. It might, and you could probably make the argument that it's easier the other way, actually. And so I need the absolute value of, uh, I messed it up, P is negative 200 minus, because there's a minus in the formula, 580, another absolute value bar. This is the absolute value of, let's see here, if I'm at negative 200, and then I subtracted another 500, I'd be at negative 700. But I need to go another 80 past that, so that's negative 780. But when you take the absolute value of a negative number, you just have, I don't even need these bars anymore, you just have positive 780. So that means that um, there's a 780 foot vertical distance between when he was 200 feet, I didn't say he, I guess he or she, was um, 200 feet below sea level and when that person was 580 feet above sea level. There's a 780 foot different distance there. And you could think of it as like a visual model too. Like if this is the elevation as this person goes, and maybe this is sea level here, to zero, then at their lowest point, they were here at negative 200, and at their highest point, they were here at positive 580. And so this distance here is 780. And so it asks, how should we interpret 780 feet in the context of this problem? I think I actually kind of just explained that to you. So uh, if you can summarize what I just said, that would be a good uh, explanation as part, part of your answer and part of your explanation in this assignment. And then for part B, it says, after lunch, the hiker hiked back down the trail from the point of elevation, which is 580 feet above sea level, and back to the beginning of the trail, which is negative 200 or 200 feet below sea level. What is the vertical distance between 580 feet above sea level and 200 feet below sea level? This is sort of the same question. Oh, I see, I see what they're getting at here. The, the idea here is that if this is still 580 and this is still negative 200, I guess would be about here. Well, last time I let P be negative 200 and Q be 580 because that was just sort of the order in the question. It was negative 200 first and then 580 second. Well, this time, Let's essentially just do the same problem, but this time P is 580 because it came first in the question, and Q will be negative 200. And let's still just do the absolute value of P minus Q, like we have written over here. So the absolute value of 580 minus, and this minus sign comes from the formula, but then I also have a negative sign here for negative 200, so I've got minus a negative, and if we add the inverse, right, well, every time I say minus, 580 minus, I'm gonna change that to addition, but then I have to invert the next number, so instead of being negative, it's now positive. When I add these two numbers together, I get the absolute value of 780, which equals 780. So both of these answers came out the same, and that's what they want you to see on this page. It doesn't matter if you're talking about going from negative 200 to 580, or if you're talking about going from Actually, this one, we were going from 580 to negative 200, and this one, we were going from negative 200 to 580. It doesn't matter um, the direction. Both ways, because of the absolute value bars, you should come out to positive 780. Okay, so uh, I think that's enough for me on that one. I don't want to do all the questions for you. I want to leave some for you to do on your own and explain on your own. So I'm going to skip the one that's on page 51, and I'm going to go to the one on page 61, but in this book, it's on page 55. And it says I should look for example two, parts A and B. So that's these two. Make sure they're on the screen well. And it says, if all of the fours from the playing hand on the right, so boom, 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 are discarded, how will the score be affected? Model this using a product in an equation. A product is what you get when you multiply two numbers. So 
or, or more than two numbers. Any number of numbers, when you multiply them, you get a product. Um, we want to see what happens when we discard all these. So, well, really what's happening when you discard a card is that number is being subtracted from your hand. And so this is like negative five minus, oh wait, no, I almost messed up big time there. You wouldn't subtract it from this card. You have to subtract what happens from the current score. So let's figure out what the current score is. Let's see here, four plus four plus four is 12, and plus a negative five, that's the same as minus five, we're at seven. So the current score is seven. And then if we were to discard these three fours, that's like seven minus four, minus four, minus four. But we can, re we can rewrite these as plus negative four, plus negative four, plus negative four. So seven plus negative four, plus negative four, plus negative four. And now we can rewrite this as multiplication because multiplication is repeated addition. And so if we're adding negative four to itself three times, then that means this expression is the same as seven plus three times negative four, as we added negative four three times. Oh, and I guess I should figure out what that equals. So this is seven plus negative 12. And actually, I'll leave that to you to figure out what that equals. So B says what three matching cards would be added to those pictured to get the same change in score? Model this using a product in an equation. So what three matching cards could be added? So they're talking about, like, how could you change the score the same way it changed by discarding three fours by picking up cards? Adding cards means to, like, pick them up from the draw pile or whatever. So, well, I kind of wrote it here. I wrote that you could add a negative four, add a negative four, and add a negative four. So it's basically going to be this same... Um, equation here, really. It's your original score is 7, and then we're going to add 3 negative 4 cards, and that's 7 plus 3 times negative 4. So yeah, it, they just want you to see that you're discarding these positive 4s and adding some negative four cards to your hand gets you the, the same score in the end, and they could be modeled the same way using multiplication because they essentially do the same thing. All right, and I think I'll skip the one that's on page 75. So the last one I'm gonna do for you is the one that's on page 94 in most books, but it's on page 85 in this older book. Page 85, example four. So that's this one where um, we have to rewrite this expression as only multiplication, and so I think that means that we want to change this division and this division to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. That's just a fancy way of saying keep change flip. And then evaluate, that means to, you know, to evaluate an expression is what a lot of students mean when they say solve or find the answer. It just means to complete all the operations with all the numbers that you see, and then arrive at one single numerical representation of what this equals. It's just, it basically just means solve, but we say evaluate. Okay, so I'm gonna change all of these divisions to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. And I like dots instead of x's for multiplication. And the multiplicative inverse, that just means to flip the fraction or take its reciprocal. So 2 thirds becomes 3 halves and times negative eight times three times, so I have to take the reciprocal of this negative one half. The negative sign stays. Multiplicative inverses don't change positivity or negativity. They only flip the fraction. So this one half becomes two over one, which is essentially just two. I didn't even need to write that one. And now we can complete some multiplications. So one times three halves, that's really easy. That's just three halves. And then I think I'll do, in the same step, I'm gonna do this negative eight times this three. So that's negative 24. Let me put that in parentheses. 
and then I still have this negative 2 over here. I'm not going to write it as negative 2 over 1. There's no point in that. Now, I'm going to... There's lots of different ways. Like You don't even have to do this the same order I'm doing. There's different ways I see I could do it. I'm just going to do it the way that I think looks simplest to most students. And so I'm going to keep the three halves for right now, and I'm going to multiply the negative 24 and the negative 2, and that gets me a positive 48. And so what I'm left with is just three halves times 48, and I think I'll leave that for you to solve from there. So on your homework sheet, you should you know, show all your steps like you're doing here, and then in your explanation, just sort of explain why you did some of the steps. What, what does it mean to you know, rewrite it as only multiplication? What are you doing there? Keep change flip or whatever. What does it mean to evaluate? And just maybe explain some of your steps to someone that wouldn't know what you were doing. All right, uh, that's it. Good luck on the test.